Hey guys, Richard Holden here, and welcome to the channel. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified about all these tests. Today, we're going to take a look at a very interesting comparison. On one side, we have the 3800 Supercharged Series 3 V6. On the other side, we have the naturally aspirated but four valve 4200 Amera Barra. So I know you're excited, Richard. Are you going to do it back to back, apples to apples, same boost level? No, we're not doing that. What I'm doing is comparing these two motors that I ran. We did run both of them with a turbo. Yes, the supercharged version with a turbo and then the naturally aspirated Amera Barra with a turbo. What we're going to do is take a look at what GM did to evolve from the 3800 with the blower to a naturally aspirated 4200 and make even more power and then of course we're going to add boost in this video we're going to compare the 3800 series 3 supercharged v6 to the naturally aspirated 4200 amerabara atlas motor we're going to run them both stock the way that we run them on the engine dyno then we're going to add a turbo to both of them that's right we're going to add a turbo to the amerabara add a turbo to the already supercharged 3800 and see what the difference is in power we're also going to find out how much boost it took to get to the power levels for each Okay, guys, right off the bat, we're not going to do a direct comparison, run at the same boost level, same timing, same air fuel, apples to apples kind of thing. I'm only comparing these two motors to show how GM evolved from the supercharged 3800 series into the naturally aspirated 4200, and they make very comparable power, as we'll see here. So it's interesting that you can do that in two different ways. So let's take a look at the power numbers here. First, we ran the 3800 Series 3 with the upgraded Gen 5 blower from the later L67 stuff. This was a 2004 L32 from a Grand Prix GTP. We ran it with the stock pulley and stock throttle body, stock exhaust, breathing into an open 3-inch exhaust. It had the accessories on there because we needed those to run the water pump. Obviously, there were no loads on those. We ran it with a Holley HP management system, uh, and we ran the 4200 with a uh, Mega Squirt, an MS3 Pro. So both, uh, both of them obviously had optimized air fuel and timing on it. So this was run on 91 pump gas to begin with. We ran and equipped with 91 octane. We varied the timing from 15 to 22 degrees. You know, it was increasing with RPM. Our 3800 Series 2 rated at 260 horsepower, made 272 horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque, 279.6. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran our 4200. And this was a 2005, so it was the early version rated at 271 or 5 horsepower, something like that. You see, it made, it made more power, and this is not surprising given the fact that it was rated at a higher power level than, I think it was 275, rated at a higher power level than the factory Series uh, 3 Supercharged 3800. So with the... Atlas motor, it made 291.7 horsepower and good torque curve, 292 foot-pounds. The interesting thing is that in, in one of the series of tests that we ran on the 3800, what we did was add E85. Now, we tried running E85 on the 4200 when it was naturally aspirated, but it didn't make any more power. It did eventually when we added boost, but not naturally aspirated. But on the supercharged 3800 Series 3 motor, when we added E85, it picked up quite a bit of power. In fact, when we ran E85 in that motor with a stock boost and stock throttle body and stock pulley, the power output was very, very comparable to the 4200. As you can see, they both made very, very close to the same peak power, 291 versus 291 versus 
289. So very close in terms of peak power. If you look at the curves, they're very comparable. Down below 4,500 RPM, it looked like the supercharged version had a little advantage in uh, torque production. Although the torque curve from the 4200 was also very flat. The one thing that did happen on the 4200 that didn't happen on the 3800 is that the if we take a look here, the 4200 actually responded fairly well. Like we put an air intake on it, and then I put a long tube header that it, we I had made for it from Jason over at JT Fab, and those picked power up not a ton, but at least a little bit. The peak power with the header and the air intake was up to 294 horsepower, so not a ton. And we saw a similar thing with the 3800. The headers didn't make a big difference. They did drop back pressure a little bit, which a lot of guys are saying is good for um, to re reduce knock retard. The air intake that I put on, the radius entry that I put on the throttle body didn't do a ton of power. We saw a little bit of torque in the middle from the 4200, but neither one of them responded dramatically to these kinds of upgrades. But the one thing that they did both respond to, <laughs> obviously, is boost. So now we'll take a look at what happened when we added boost to these different dif these two different motors. Now that we've taken a look at the comparison between the supercharged 3800 and the naturally aspirated 4200 <laughs> in stock trim, and obviously with E85 on the 3800 Series 3 motor, we can take a look and see what happens when we added boost to both of them. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, Richard, the 3800 already has boost. Yeah, but if you have boost, you can still add boost to that boost, right? So we're going to take a look at see what happens when we added turbos to both of these combinations. Because I ran a, if you take a look at the video that I have up, we added a turbo to the supercharged combination, making it a compound. And it worked out very well. But we also added a turbo to the 4200. And the interesting thing is, since they're starting out at roughly the same power output, and we showed you the curves on the two of them, that when we added boost to them, um, the difference in the in the boost required to make very similar power outputs is kind of cool. So this is our supercharged 3800 Series 3 motor. It was making about 10 pounds at the very top. Here's what happened when we added our we added a GT45 turbo to this combination and when we added this, the turbo was only supplying about seven pounds of boost to the supercharged combination. Because of the multiplier effect, uh, we, you multiply the pressure ratios, the resulting boost in the manifold actually turned out to be about 23 pounds. So it's a lot of boost, but we're only providing seven pounds of boost to a motor that already had about 10 pounds of boost from the supercharged. So this compound setup made good power. We were looking at 400 and 480 horsepower or so on this supercharged combination with E85. Now here we can look at this in comparison to our 4200. So here's our 4200. NA again, it was very similar to the 3800 in its supercharged form. And here's what happened when we added boost to the 4200. Again, comparable power numbers, although it, when we look at it, we see that the 4200 had a lot more average torque production, at least from 36 or 3700 RPM. Here in the middle, 463 versus 499, so 35 or 36 foot-pounds of torque. So you'd feel that in the middle there. There would, there would definitely be a difference. The, there are two things. One, this 4200, we ran turbocharged. This was only running 8.3 pounds. So it was running less boost than the supercharged version by itself was running and a whole lot less than the compound version, which turned out to be about 23 pounds in the manifold. So obviously not an apples to apples comparison, but interesting that when we added essentially seven pounds or so front with a turbo to the supercharged motor, we added about, about eight pounds to the 4200. They made similar numbers um, after they were turbocharged. So kind of a, an interesting deal. The other thing that I want you to look at, and this is something a lot of guys brought up when I introduced the compound boost video on the 3800. If you take a look at the boost curves of the green, right here in this area below 3700 rpm i didn't run it low enough like down at 2500 to see what it would do but 
what this shows is that the 3800 in compound situation with the blower and the turbo will probably make a lot more low speed power than the 4200 with the turbo because the turbo didn't come up. It wasn't as responsive on the 4200 as it was on the supercharged 3800 because the supercharged motor already has boost. It already has a lot of torque. So in this combination, we had a very responsive motor um, or a very responsive turbo installed on a supercharged motor. So the response rate of the turbo was enhanced even more. So my guess is in the 2500 to 3500 range, the supercharged 3800 with the turbo on it would be much more responsive. Although again, <laughs> you're looking at 23 pounds of boost versus 8.3 pounds of boost on the 4200. And this, this will kind of um, finish things up here. Let's take a look and see what happened when we did increase the boost on the 4200. Now we only ran it up to 11.3 pounds, but you can see it made a lot more power. I mean, power jumped all the way up to... 555 horsepower torque is up to 578 foot pounds uh, but again the response rate of the turbo was very similar so we could still expect the supercharged combination at the 23 pounds of total boost to be more responsive down low from 2500 to 3500 and and for the street that might be you know that might be a lot more fun if these if you race these two vehicles <laughs> equipped with these motors I think that the edge would definitely go to the 4200 and you're not running very much boost. So I think things would work out ultimately a lot better, but it shows what happens and, and how these motors have evolved by GM from the power output of the supercharged version to getting that same power or even more with the NA version. And then obviously if we have more NA power, we add boost to that, make even more turbo power. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn in this little adventure comparing the 3800 Series 3 Supercharged V6 to the naturally aspirated 4200 Atlas Amerabera? How do they get even more power out of the naturally aspirated version than the supercharged version? Well, let's take a look at all the things that help make power. First of all, they got rid of the blower, which was a step in the wrong direction, in my opinion. A blower on the Amerabera would be even better, but they did step up in a number of things. First of all, obviously, displacement. 3,800, 3.8 liter, 4,200, 4.2 liter, bigger is better, helps make more power, and not just more peak power, but more power everywhere. The other thing they did was increase the static compression, and as we know, more static compression makes more power. The other thing they did, obviously, is change the cylinder head. Four valve head flows a lot more than the stock heads used on the 3800 Series 2 and 3 motors. More head flow, more power. I would also argue that the intake manifold on the Atlas Marabera is better suited to making power in the RPM range that that motor is running than the very short runner on the supercharger. You see GM was relying on the instant boost response of the roots type supercharger to enhance torque production without worrying about runner length. But runner length helps make power everywhere in that RPM range, so much better deal. The other thing is variable cam timing. Variable cam timing on the 4200 allows this thing, again, like the intake manifold, to make a lot more average power, and you can enhance the cam timing to make good power. And as we saw, the naturally aspirated 4200 actually makes more power than the supercharged 3800 and still until you start making tweaks to the 3800 but that was a test run on the 05 version of the 4200 and the 06 and up version make even more naturally aspirated power when we started adding boost to the equation not surprisingly they both responded well to turbocharging we added seven pounds of turbo boost to our 3800 and then we added various different boost levels on the atlas Bear. and as we saw <laughs> it took 23 pounds from the compound supercharged 3800 to make similar power to the Atlas Amerabera at just 8.3 pounds. So obviously, if you're gonna choose one and you wanna make lots of power, choose the motor that's starting out that makes more power naturally aspirated, then add boost. But does that mean I don't like the 3800? Oh, heck no. It's already one of my favorites. Our Richard Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.